look, bro. God says marriage is honorable. That's Not right. boyfriend and girlfriend. There's more to it. Listen up, bro. And the bed of marriage is honorable in all. And the bed undefiled. So God says marriage is honorable. And when you have sex with your spouse, it's undefiled. You have sex with your girlfriend? So God says that's defiled. He doesn't honor that. That means you got to get married, exactly. That's when things start to be blessed by God. Good. Do you want to work for the so-called white man for the rest of your life? No. Because God created us to be rulers. We're supposed to rule this place. But we don't want to do what he say, slavery. You understand that, sis? So, what are some things that you need to do? One, you need to stop working on the Sabbath. Right. I ain't telling you to quit your job right away, but you gotta, you gotta stop. You gotta find a way. Matter of fact, there's a number on the back of that flyer. Give us a call. We can show you how you can get the Sabbath day off. Right. Get that number a call. We will show you step by step of what you need to do. You can come build with us and we'll help you get another job where you don't have to work on the Sabbath no more. You, you got a girlfriend? You understand? So we're going to show you to not have a girlfriend but to marry her. Right. So you got to prove her to make sure that she's worthy to be your wife first. Then you marry her. Because when you say you got a girlfriend, guess what you're doing? You're making a whore out of her. Right. There's no honor in that. God only honors marriage. I'm going to show you. Give me that Hebrews 13 and 4. I'm going to show you that. What you got, bro? I got you. We going into that next. What's your name, bro? What's your name? Hey, we talking to these brothers about how we gonna get the kingdom, and that's how we gonna get the kingdom by repenting and keeping God's law. This is part of God's law. Hebrews thirteen and four. The book of Hebrews, chapter thirteen and verse four. Marriage is honorable in all. See, the Bible says marriage, marriage, marriage is honorable in all. Not boyfriend and girlfriend. Not side pieces. Not one night stands. Now, how long you been with your girlfriend? Three years. Three years. So y'all been building with each other for three years. Did you know her prior to that three years before she came your your girlfriend? So you've been knowing her for how long collectively? Yeah. Five years. So you kinda like know who know her. You know her, her mannerisms, then you know her mom and dad, cousins, aunties, sisters, brothers. You been to their house? Yeah. They've been to yours? They know your parents? Yeah. So you know her, right? Yeah, yeah. So you want to make an honest woman out of her. That's what you want to do. That's what your next step should be with her. Right. So look, bro. God says marriage is honorable. That's Not right. boyfriend and girlfriend. There's more to it. Listen up, bro. And the bed of marriage is honorable in all. And the bed undefiled. So God says marriage is honorable. And when you have sex with your spouse, it's undefiled. You have sex with your girlfriend? So God says that's defiled. He doesn't honor that. That means you got to get married, exactly. That's when things start to be blessed by God. Good. So, in order to get married, right? So, so you saying when you meet her, marry her? No, I'm not saying when you meet her, marry. You said you've been knowing her for five years, yeah. right? So, and you've been a boyfriend to her for three of those five. So for the last three years, y'all been intimate with one another. But two of those years before that, you, you started to know her, right? So typically how it should go, give me some rock six and seven. Yeah. Typically how it should go, when you meet a sister, y'all supposed to prove each other. Y'all supposed to not date. It's called going out on courtship. You know what I'm saying? Where, where a married couple will accompany y'all while y'all go out. Right. You understand? Where y'all not touching, y'all not hugging and kissing each other down. You're not sticking your finger inside trying to see how, how it smell. You're not test driving it. You know what I'm saying? You ain't doing none of those things. What you're doing is you getting to know her as a person. That's right. Why? Because that's God's daughter. And you're gonna treat God's daughter with respect. Right. That's why we should. Right. So the proper steps of marrying, you get to know her first. That's courtship. The Bible talks about that. Read it. The book of Sirach, chapter 6 and verse 7. 
If thou wouldest get a friend, prove first and be not hasty to credit him. All right, read it again and read it slow. So what the Bible is talking about, if you want this woman to be your wife, you got to prove her first, meaning you got to get to know her. You got to see how she responds when there's adversity between y'all. She may want to hit your side of the head with an with a, a iron skillet when y'all get mad. So you want to see her temperament. She may just be dumb as I don't know what. Do you want to marry a dumb woman? You got to figure that out first. But if you have sex with her first, according to the Bible, you defiled her already. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's people who do that. Bro. But you defiled the woman already. You know what I'm saying? So what I'm trying to show you is you got to get to know her. But you say you already know her. Now your next step is to marry her. But typically, this is how it goes. You get to know her first. So prove a friend first. Read it again. The book of Sirach, chapter 6 and verse 7. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. And be not hasty to credit him. So you can't be quick to be like, man, you know what? She look like Holly Berry. I'm going to go ahead and just marry her. Right. Nah. You got to take your time. Go out on, go, get, get some courtships, meaning you get married couples to go out with you. To go out, y'all go to the museum or something. Y'all can sit and talk on the phone. Talk about meaningful things. Talk about, hey, look, how, do you, how are you with money? Are you good with money? Do you know how to budget? What are your aspirations? What are your goals? Find those type of things out first. Then you take the next step. The next step is that now you got to patrol her. You got to become engaged to her. Even in the process of engagement, you still can't have sex with her. You know what I'm saying? So let me show you what the step that you have to take. Give me Exodus 22. Bring it up. Back up a little bit. This is the step that you have to take now, bro. But like I said, get that number of call. We're going we gonna to walk you step by step on how to make yourself honorable in God's eyesight. Because right now, he's trying to deal with you. That's why he brought you here right now. Because he sees something in you that he wants to make of you. He wants to wake up that lion so you can be out here roaring for your people. You understand? Read it. Exodus 22, 16. The book of Exodus chapter 22 and verse 16. If a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and lay with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. So the Bible said if a man entice, how do you entice? Sis, how do you how does a man entice a woman? Oh, uh, I'm sorry, you're talking to me, babe. How does a man entice a woman? We're talking about a man should marry a woman. The Bible says if a man entice a maid, how does a man entice a woman? He talks to her. He, he talks to her. He, he talks to her. He engages to her. He he um he goes after her. Right. You hear that? You hear that, bro? Yeah, I heard. And it say nothing about no woman find no man. It so, said a man find a wife. If a man entice a maid. Now look, bro. Listen. Listen closely. This is important. Read it again. If a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and lied with her. You lied with the sister. I mean, you had sex with her. You enticed her. You gamed her down for two years. And then she became your girlfriend. You had sexual relationships with her, but you didn't marry her. Right, you to marry her. That's okay. But you didn't marry her. So God says you got to do this. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. So you must, you must make her your wife. That's right. Yep, that's what because if you don't, if you don't, if you don't do that, you cause her to be a whore. Because guess what she gonna do? She gonna go to the next man and do the same thing. Right. So you got to make her your wife. Already done. But you got to make it official. You got to go get marriage papers. You understand? You got to get marriage papers. You got to get a seal, a covenant. Give me that in Tobit. Tobit, uh, what's that? 7? 14. 14. 7 and 14. Get that in Tobit. Now, sis, you had a question? Sis, did you have a question? Okay. Bro, do you understand what we were just talking about about marriage? You got a girlfriend? You married? How did you, what steps did you take to get married, bro? Bro, uh, met the lady, got to know her, mm -hmm. spent some time with her, met her family. Did you have sex with her before you married her? Yeah. But you married her though, right? Yeah. So you applied Exodus 22, 16. So look, bro, you gotta get papers now. Yeah. Listen to what the Bible says. You I'm believe in God, God, right? Cool. Don't you wanna please God? Don't you wanna stop the bleeding? Slavery? Because we still in slavery. Just because we go to Amazon and work, that don't mean nothing. Oh, yeah, I 
Because we're supposed to be in rulership. I read it. The book of Tobit, chapter 7, and verse 14. And called Edna his wife, and took paper, what? and took paper, yeah, and did write an instrument of covenant. So, marriage papers is an instrument of covenant, meaning you are now sealing the deal, telling God, look, I'm going to be with this woman forever. Right. Until I die, or she dies. One of us die, then I could go marry someone else. Right. Or if she commits adultery or fornication, I can I can put her away and marry someone else. God forbid that happens. I have a question. You were talking about marriage. Now, when the woman was caught in the very act. You talking about in in Matthews? Yeah, when she was caught with the very act, and they told the people wanted and John, wanted to stone John her. When the people wanted to stone her because she was caught in the very act, right? How common is they always want to go with the woman and not the man? Because it takes two things. Well, one thing you got to realize, right? When Jesus was dealing with those Pharisees, they were hypocrites. Yeah, I know. They were trying they to was, get him. They were trying to trick him. Yeah. I right? Know. They were trying to get him to fall into some foolery so they could accuse him. Right. That's true. But Christ was very wise. Yes, he is. You know what I'm saying? So he said, hey, look, which one of y'all is without sin? Cast, cast the first cast stone. Cast the first stone. Yes, he did. And then he went to her, hey. Is any of your accusers here? Yep. They was gone. No well, I don't accuse you either. Right. Sin no more. Sin no what more. is sin, sis? I'm so sorry. Sin is anything that's uh, not of God. Anything that's not of God. Right. Anything that's not of God. Right. Anything that's not of God. Right. Anything that's not of God. Anything that we do wrong is not of God. Anything that we do wrong that is not of God. I like that. That's a, that's a summarized version of what the Bible is about to say. But the Bible is very detailed Detail, yeah. on what sin is. And I want you to get the Bible version. Right. Okay. So then you can have more understanding of what your abbreviated summary was. Okay. Is that fair? That's fair. All right, read. The book of First John, chapter 3 and verse 4. Bring it up. Whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So the Bible says whosoever committed sins transgressed the law. The word transgress means to break. So the Bible says whosoever committed sin breaks the law. Read that bottom part. For sin is the transgression of the law. For sin is the breaking of God's laws or God's rules. He has household rules for his children. Right. Can I give you a rule? Okay. Give me Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Bring I'm going to give you a rule because it's for him and it's for you. But it's ultimately for our nation. That's because right. God deals with us as a nation. Right. So remember, if if the people went into sin, we had to rid the sin out of the people in order for God to show favor to us. Right. That's why we are in servitude right now. Right. The nations are over us because majority of us is in sin. That's right. We are out here to try to undo that. That's right. One person at a time. Amen. So we're going to start with you, sis. Is that fair? Well, look, sis, the reason why I'm going to start with you, because you, you have children, right? The children come out of you, right? and you raise those children. A woman could teach a multitude of people. So if you could get it right, you could go teach those people. And then we could get closer to the kingdom and rulership again. Right. So that's why I'm going to deal with you, because you have children, and you can teach those children. You understand? Is that fair? All right, read it. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not dwell that which pertaineth unto a man. So, now, if I go to this, this peace market, right, it has a public washroom in it. Am I right about that? How would you know which washroom to go to if it didn't have any words on it? You wouldn't know. You wouldn't know? So, which one you going to go into? Either one. Either one? Yep. Now, typically, it has symbols on it. It has a symbol of a man and a symbol of a woman. If there's no words. Right. How do you know which one to go into? I will either try to read the symbol. Okay. Now, how would you know which one is for the woman? By what I was taught. A lot of time I would go inside and look at people and look at So what would, the, what would the symbol of the woman be shaped as? As like a lady, like have a dress. Like a dress. Like a dress. Yes. I'm glad you say that. Now, listen to what God says. Read it again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth to a man. 
So it's universal knowledge for men to wear pants and women to wear dresses. Right. You understand that? Now you gotta remember, when God wrote this, he wrote this for eternity. Yeah. This has gotta be kept forever. Right. No yeah. matter what time of day, no matter what our slave masters say, we still got to do what God says, because what God says, that's what matters. That's right. right. So I'm going to read it all the way through so you can understand the significance of what God is saying. That's right. Read. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth to a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So a man shouldn't be wearing a dress. That's true. But all that do so, all that, all, all that do so. So if any woman is wearing pants or if any man is wearing a dress, You know what that means, sis? For God to call you an abomination? That means God is disgusted with you. Bring it out. That's what God is saying. Bring it out. So us as God's messengers, we gotta go out into the community and warn them. What is a nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is 